Welcome back everyone. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the back side of the Singer 301 and I've got some bright orange thread here on purpose and uh, like I always do with my machines, this is Guterman. I, I like Mettler, Madeira, uh, Orifil, and uh, Gutterman are some of your better brands of thread. Some of you may have others that you like, but uh, always use a premium brand of thread. The difference in cost between this and the ultra cheap stuff is very little and you'll get less lint and you'll let get fewer th fewer threads breaking no thread is perfect but anyway okay so I'm starting in the back here because I want you to see this uh, the first thread guide you have you could almost miss and you'll see that it's right here normally you wouldn't have to turn this machine around to thread it but I just wanted you guys to see this because it's easy to miss and hopefully this thread, this bright color will show up against the black for you guys. Now I will turn it back around and we will be ready to come over into the front. And now you can see I have this first guide which is almost like a little valley. It comes straight across and uh, by the way there's a little uh, little trough if you will in the top lid of the machine that's kind of a place for that thread to go. The more you thread sewing machines, the more you'll realize they're all quite similar. They vary a bit with each one. Now, I'm going to move in closer and let you guys see more closely how I'm threading it. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to come over, of course. Um, most sewing machines thread. Uh, the thread path, once you get to the, to the top thread guide above, and you're coming down, it's almost like a, you're making a, a U. It's like a U shape. We're going to come here. And because we have this little ear on the back, that's like a guide. You put your thread against that, and then as you pull forward, it just brings your thread right in between those discs. Now, I want to turn this this way. I want you guys to see what's happening. Sometimes threading uh, tension discs is kind of something you do by feel, and you can't always tell what's going on with it. So let's see if we can focus in. I'll try my best. It's a little odd thing to... to so you can see the thread is coming from underneath. It's between the discs. If you don't have one of those little ears, you can find the disc. This, that was just like a convenience feature. Now, you want to hold. I'm holding the spool of thread on the back of the machine just lightly. I don't want it to be totally uh, loose. Now, watch what happens. As I come up from the thread, excuse me, from the tension discs, notice I'm hitting this check spring right here, but I haven't installed it yet. So I'm going to hold onto my spool and I'm going to pull up. And as I do, Watch what happens. The thread is actually moving around. Come here. The thread is moving around this curved uh, piece of metal. That's the cap that, that the uh, tension discs live in. Now watch what happens as I pull up. I'm going to keep pulling and that thread keeps moving and it's going to land. The thread is going to slide upward around this cover and it's going to land in this little valley here. Okay, so I'm pulling, 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 and as I keep pulling, all of a sudden, boom, now I have, my thread is now in this valley, and if you look, the check spring should come back down, okay? If it ever sticks, you want to make sure it, it comes back down here, because now, watch what happens when I'm pulling up on the thread, the check spring is pushing against it. Right? That is part of the tensioning of your sewing machine. Uh, so, uh, we have this threaded. Now, what is the rest of our thread path? It's fairly simple. Let me pan back out just a bit. Uh, I'm going to have to tilt this up so you guys can see me because I'm going up and down with the, uh, with the threading on this machine. Now, we'll, we'll sort of pan back out or you'll miss this. Now, now that you have it uh, in your check spring, we're going to come inside this, this big thread guide. It's kind of open. Make sure your, your take-up arm, which is, your, which is right here on the 301, make sure it's in the up position, right? And forgot to mention, make sure your presser lift, your presser bar is up, not down, because you don't want to thread your machine when your tension discs are tight. So I'm going to come through the hole in the take-up arm. And again, you have to kind of uh, watch your machine, make sure that 
you're behind that, that guide. Sometimes the thread will wiggle on you, so you have to kind of watch that. Now I'm going to come back down, and I'm going to hit this thread guide. And you hear some, a lot of times you'll hear the needle make a little click. Not always. Here's another little uh, pigtail style thread guide. And again, you want to look at your, uh, I'm holding, you can't really see this, I'm holding the thread spool because I need a little bit of tension on the thread as I'm, as I'm coming in here. Now, I hit this thread guide right Right here. Now I have to refocus down as we get toward the needle, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a close-up. So now we are, this is the, the, well actually there are three. This is the first of three thread guides as we're moving toward the needle. Here's the second one, and then here's the last one. And that last one is going to come way over here, right? I don't know if, if this showed up. Let me, uh, I'll pull this out and do it again. So we're in the first thread guide, we come into the second. When we come into the third, you have to look, it's right underneath the needle clamp, the thing that holds your needle. But notice I'm gonna pull it to the right and it's gonna sit here. And that's a good thing because this machine is one of the three Singer models where the needles will thread from the right towards the left. And that's, it's in your manual. You don't have, like I say, uh, you'll find that if you're new to threading a 301 or 201 or featherweight, you'll wanna know that. Okay, so now we have threaded the Singer 301. We have the whole machine threaded. It's just waiting for a needle, and that will be the next, um, the next op, um, procedure, if you will. Okay, guys, continuing on, I am going to use... Uh, I have different needles I put in different machines based on what I anticipate my clients will want to sew with them. It's just a guess. Uh, the Singer 301 is legendary as a strong machine. I really think it excels, particularly with garment sewing, uh, quilting. I'm going to install an Oregon brand titanium coated size 14 needle. Of course, this machine takes smaller needles. I think it takes as small as nine, uh, and it will go up even larger. But this is, again, just kind of a, uh, kind of a guess. Uh, I'm going to have to order some more of these. I really like them. Uh, here you will see, how do you know if it's a titanium coated? It has, it has a, uh, a chrome upper shaft and then it has this gold colored uh, coating on the needle. Now, of course needles, and I've mentioned this before in terms of how to install needles, every needle has uh, a, a flat side. One side of it is flat. If I turn it in the light here, you guys might see it. I don't know if you see this, but as soon as I turn it, there it is. Oops. Right there. It's facing us. That's the flat side. And then the rest of it is round. It's shaped like the letter D. And the flat side for a Singer 301 needle installation always goes towards the left. Now, that's different. Most vintage sewing machines, which uh, load needles from the side, go in the opposite direction. But there are three Singer models that do it uh, this way. And they use the same needle, so there's nothing really unusual or bizarre here. You just want to be sure that you have the needle facing in the right direction because the machine was engineered to work that way. It's not really more difficult, Just it's just uh, something to know. Now I'm going to take the, the, um, the needle and I'm going to get it inserted. I can get my, there we go, I've got to get my needle bar up high enough. Now, uh, I've got my flat side facing the left. Let's zoom in so you guys can get a little bit better view of what I'm up to here. And let's see if this machine will focus. Okay. Uh, now, I think I mentioned this before, but it always it, it really should bear repeating. When you have a, a needle that you're installing, the first thing you want to make sure of, you probably do not have lint up in the shaft of where the needle lives. If you do, you'll know because it won't go in all the way. I, I think I've had that problem once or twice in nine years. Uh, but let's assume you don't, like most machines. Again, watch your flat side because it can easily turn when you're, when you're holding the needle. Now, the needle clamp 
is this device and you can see the little uh, set screw there. So I've got my flat side facing to the left uh, and I'm going to simply come up into the shaft here until the needle stops. And when you find that stopping place, don't let go of the needle, but then go ahead with your other hand and just snug the set screw. And that way you know your needle is in right position. If you, if you let go or if it drops down below <clears throat> the stopping point, you can throw off your timing. And that's true of any machine. It's not particular to the 301. And just to make sure my flat side is facing to the left, I know that on the back I should feel the groove of the needle. And of course, there it is. Okay, and next up is to simply thread the needle itself. Um, and you can use, if you have trouble uh, threading a needle, by the way, uh, you can either use a magnifying glass or they make uh, accessory needle threading devices. They've been around since the 50s. Um, I'm not talking about the automatic needle threading of new machines. And from there, you can... Um, of course get the needle threaded and get ready to sew. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to thread the needle. I had to change the position of the camera because the camera was actually in the way of me being able to see what I was doing. Sometimes if you can get behind the needle, you'll be able to see the, the eye of the needle can be a little bit easier to, for you to look at or spot because that's, that's what you're aiming for obviously. Okay guys, it looks like I've gotten it started here. You may have different techniques for getting a needle threaded. Um, this mine is to simply be able to see the eye of the needle in light. Uh, there are different techniques. You may have to cut the end of the thread again if it gets a little frayed when you're trying to thread. Also, you'll notice I'm holding the thread here to make sure that, it, that the needle threads without the, you don't want the thread wiggling and sort of coiling around the needle because that can create its own issues. <coughs> Again, that's true with any, any machine, really. Pulling up some of my slack here. Now, let's see. And I'm going to, of course, bring my top thread down and then get my, uh, see if I can get my bobbin thread pulled up. And there it comes, right there. Sort of a tan colored thread. I'm just going to pull this up so that now my bobbin thread and my top thread tails are now up above the machine where they need to be as uh, you start setting your machine up to start sewing. Now, what's missing? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to put our presser foot back on the, back on the machine. It's been sitting off there since we began. And again, I've got some old oil here on here. That's, this is mostly an aesthetic thing. You don't have to remove that unless you really want to. Uh, there are, your, your presser foot actually uh, tilts. This is, of course, the slant shank foot that Singer used on these machines. And again, you know, it has uh, some movement to it. I seldom, I seldom have an issue with these locking up uh, just because they're, uh, they're easy to see. If there was an issue, the sewer would have known. Um, and I don't really put any lubrication on these. To, you know, you might want to, but again, this is an area where you want to use very little, if any, sewing oil because, again, you don't want uh, lint building up here. And, of course, I've got my set screw, and I'm going to put one drop of oil, as I do on the threads of any screw. This is not part of normal oiling. When you get ready to oil your machine for normal operation, you don't need to pull these screws out and oil them. This is again is a restores technique. Bringing a, a machine that's been asleep uh, back to the way it should be. And just because it's sewed a stitch when I bought it doesn't mean I can just, just, you know, put it up for sale and call it a day. Not anywhere close. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust my tension here just a bit. See what we got here. And I'll start round three, three and a half. 
Okay, so we've got the machine threaded and we only lack our little drip pan. <laughs> uh, we're going to put new felt on that. Uh, we don't want to leave that old drip pan like it is. And then we're going to do some test sewing. It'll be time to get this 301 back into business and find it a new home. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you have comments or questions about your own Singer 301, or any machine for that matter, put your comments down below. If you subscribe to the channel, you will have access to the About page where it has emails. You can always contact me through email. And I uh, really appreciate you watching. There's been a, I, I didn't realize I would have this many videos come out of this Singer 301, but it's a great machine to to uh, to demonstrate restoration techniques on. The 301 was the first machine I ever restored. Not this one, but one like it. And uh, anyway, you see photos of that original rest restored machine on my um, on the on the homepage of my channel. So. Thanks again for watching, folks. Stay tuned. We, uh, we have one, maybe two more videos on this machine, and uh, it will be ready for posting.